In this video, I'm going to get taken out by a rammer. Now, it has been a while, it was long overdue, but it's going to take more than that to keep me from fighting back and achieving a good result here. Hey guys, Eri is here and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, then subscribe now and click the bell icon as well so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So the first thing is really, it feels like I haven't been around all that much. That's probably because we did Bathurst last weekend and you haven't had a video since the week before, which is exactly why you're getting this video now. I'll probably start changing up the schedule a little bit, dropping videos at 8pm UK time where I can rather than wait until the weekend. So I just wanted to drop that in. Work's been a bit manic, home life's been a bit manic with the baby coming so I just wanted to get that in there. So back to the video then, you join me here in practice, so the pre-race practice session before the race and it was a pretty messy one to be quite honest as you can see from the lap timing bar there on the right hand side. I was finding I was just pushing too hard and picking up loads of penalties through exceeding track limits, which is quite difficult around here. I mean, you wouldn't expect a track like this to punish you so hard for track limits, but they do, and I was falling foul of it quite a lot. But that's fine though, that's what this kind of practice is exactly for. I'd rather get these mistakes out of the way now, rather than finding out the hard way in the race itself. So my fastest lap in this session ended up being a 135.787 which as always for comparison at the time was 2 seconds off the best time in the region and 1.6 seconds off the top 10. Now that's a little bit further away than I'd like but that's fine for this one considering the issues we were having in practice but I ran out of time here and it was time for me to jump into the race session. Well actually before I jump into the race session and before the quality started, I found myself with five minutes left. I knew, considering the issues that I had in the pre-race practice, I had more time in me, so I tried to get a couple more laps in and managed to improve my time straight away by three tenths of a second and improved it to a 135.424. After that though, it really was time to enter the race session. Moving on to quali then, and naturally I'm going to be released from the pits 18th and basically last. But we went about our business trying to deliver a decent lap in quali here. Now this hasn't been working out terribly badly for me of late. I'm getting more and more confident with the all or nothing strategy I've been trying this season, trying to emulate those in the top split. And I was a little bit more nervous about it in this one, considering how the pre-race practice had gone. But I'm going to go for it all the same. So we have five minutes here in this one, which had us fuel saving as usual. I say fuel saving again, thank you for picking me up on it. Fuel burning on lap number one. Although saying that, I like to get around the first lap reasonably swiftly so I can go extra aggressive on the fuel burn on the second lap, knowing exactly how much time I have before I have to cross the line. Last thing I want to do is fuel burn as much as I can on the first lap and then find myself not having enough time for the second lap and having to go quickly and wear out my tyres. So as I say, I go a little bit faster here on the first lap. And once this first lap is done, the new boots go on, and as I mentioned earlier, massive fuel burn time. And then the fun and game started. So coming into the penultimate corner here, just before we start our quick lap, it turned out to be a waiting game. Nobody, as you can see here, wanted to be the first to go and be the one who punches a hole through the air giving everybody else the benefit of their toe. Only the most stubborn would be victorious here. I never thought I was stubborn. I always thought my wife just said it like all wives do, but clearly I am as I win the battle not to go first and I come across the line with a slightly uncomfortable four seconds left to go which was almost like that F1 race where everybody waited and no one came across the line in time. But thankfully we survived and then we're away here on our hot lap with a load of tow at our disposal. Unfortunately though, it turned out we were just a little bit too close to the Nissan GTR in front 
who actually ended up holding us up a little bit in the final parts of the lap here. That's always the danger of being at the back of these sorts of packs, there is a risk you can be held up. But I come across the line penalty free, unlike the McLaren up in front who will as a result have his time disqualified and start at the back of the grid and put in a 136.344 which ended up four tenths of a second off pole. Now, as you can see, this grid was very, very close with the top 10 covered by only about half a second. So this is gonna make it an interesting one here as we head over into the race session now. So here we are then lined up for the race session. As I once again get my OCD pre-race ritual out of the way, I want to give a nod to the provider of today's Tic Tac inspired livery. Thank you, Weth42. And as we sit here waiting for the race to get underway, here comes the countdown timer. I'm expecting some Red Bull-esque fighters, but none come for some reason. But anyway, we come down to turn number one here. I'm going to go wide. As you can see here, I do a little bit of tyre sort of warming, but it was to no avail. And I'm going to go really wide here into turn number one. I managed to just about avoid a penalty, but I do lose a couple of positions here and I'm going to end up going down to 11th. But that's fine though, it's a long, long race, so I'm not too panicked about it. Making our way down to the braking zone at turn number two here, taking it extra carefully as I have my eye on the radar and trying to avoid any issue, which we managed to avoid, but up ahead on the right there, there's going to be a big instant and we're back up a couple of spots to our original starting position of ninth place. And whilst we're here on the first lap, before I forget, I think this is a good opportunity to introduce the race here. So this is the next round, round number eight of the FIA Manufacturer Series, the third season of the 2019-20 Exhibition Series. We're here at the Red Bull Ring, as you've probably worked out already, in the Group 4 Lexus for 16 laps around here. Fuel isn't going to be an issue, so all of our attention can turn to the tyres. And Polyphony Digital are keeping us on our toes here by making us use all compounds as a requirement here. So all hard, medium and soft we need to use in this one. So we're going to go for the two stopper, which I'm going to stick to this time after being reminded of what happens when you go off script last time out at Catalunya. But the question is here, in which order do I use each compound? Well, due to my mid-pack starting position, I have decided to start on the hardest compound, the racing hards. I will be on these until the end of lap number three, before deciding what compound to move on to next. And the reason that I've done that is because I'm going to be in traffic. The last thing I want to do is to be on the softest compound tyre and waste these stuck behind people. So we're going to stick on these hards until lap three. And as if by magic, here we are on lap number three, our in-lap. But before we get onto the pit stop, check out these two in front here. Representing themselves and GT Sport really well, smashing into each other. One-shot FIAs and full damage will fix this polyphony, hashtag just saying. But thankfully it was time to leave those two to carry on doing their thing as we come in for our first pit stop as planned. We're gonna move onto the mediums here. In hindsight though, which is obviously a wonderful thing. I could have gone onto the softs here. I should have looked on the mini map. It's something that I need to work on to take me to that next level, because if I did check it, I would have worked out that I would have come out with some clear track in front of me, which would have allowed me to get a few quick laps on the softest compound in and potentially undercut some drivers. But I didn't, so we'll crack on here and see how everything shakes out once people start coming in. Rejoining the action on lap number five here, we're gonna catch our old friend, Tommy the Wiener. For those that remember this guy, he was the driver we raced against at Suzuka a couple of races ago. The one where we stayed behind him all race and were waiting for our time to dispatch of him before he binned it. But there will be none of that today though. No waiting around as we make the pass here coming under the bridge and up to 14th we go. On the following lap here, lap number six, we've moved up two spots to 12 as some other drivers come in for their first stops. And we were about to catch up to a large group of six cars who have yet to come in, but thankfully, four of the six piled in up ahead, promoting us eventually, once the game catches up, to eighth place. Now, next in our sights here is the Frenchman in the Merc. As I'm gonna run a little bit wide here, coming out of turn number one, which is actually gonna give me a penalty frustratingly. So 
the fact that I'm going to overtake him means nothing. In hindsight, again, I probably wouldn't have bothered because it was holding both of us up by me making this move. But again, I'm not perfect. It is what it is, and I show you everything. So even though I got past him, I'll be pulling over just about here. So pulling off the racing line to give that place back as I serve my penalty here. But I wouldn't be behind for long and make the move stick for real a little later in the lap. I dive up the inside here having to correct the car as you can see there on the wheel can to keep it tight to the inside and to give them enough room but I managed to just about do so there's no contact a clean move for us and we're now up to seventh and we're then going to make our way up to sixth on the very next lap as we take advantage of someone serving their penalty and there to be honest wasn't much else to report on really so we're going to jump all the way here to lap number 10. Other than another half second pesky penalty that I received which dropped me back down to 7th but I spared you guys having to watch that, I think we all know what serving penalties looks like and what it feels like. I don't need to describe it to you here and it was now time to follow the VLX driver in for my second and final pit stop. Completing our second and final pit stop then we headed out onto the soft compound tyre. But as we wait to come out of the pits here we're going to end up coming out right in front of the fin and as we make our way down this straight here he's got our slipstream and I'm going to have to go defensive into turn number two as I didn't want to get stuck behind the car with more worn tyres if I can at all help it. The VLX driver here is going to move across late there's nothing wrong with that but it does put me off slightly and it all gets a bit clumsy here in the braking zone. Sean's three in the Merc there comes flying up the inside pushing his way through. He really didn't have too much right to do that at all which ends up with us dropping down into 12th place. Sean Shree coincidentally was one of the guys we saw smashing into one another earlier on. I really should have learnt from that and stayed well away. Because after he piles here into turn number 3 he's going to lose momentum and we manage to pull alongside. And coming into the braking zone we are clear of him. I even take a wide line to give him room but keep your eye on the radar here. You're going to think nothing's going to happen and then bang. He's just going to ram straight into us and around we go. What an absolute nightmare. This is so disappointing on so many levels. But I'm going to try not to moan here. I'm definitely not going to rage quit or try to get any redemption. Although I was tempted just to hit start and just quit out of it. But it's going to take more than that to stress me out to the point where I lose complete control of all my emotions. And plus, it's just part of the ups and downs that we all face and part of the journey that I'm trying to document and share with you all. So we're going to get our head back down here and see what we can salvage from this one. So because of that incident, everything's going to have to change. We're car number eight in this one. Sorry, I don't think I've mentioned it so far. But the aim here is going to now to be try and get back to this spot, eighth place, and just salvage what we can, which is going to be quite a tall order considering where we are and we do not have many laps to go. But I'm not going to let drivers like that guy ruin my race. We immediately got promoted to 11th back there as we gained a couple of places from some drivers coming in and after some bumping we're then going to rise to 10th as Shawnee aka the new Momos comes in. And we're going to gain yet another position here moving up to 9th now as coming into turn number 1 on lap 13 we're going to dive up the inside of the Belgian. So things were looking good. We were gaining lots of positions but then we receive a slight setback as I find myself in my haste to try and make up positions and make up for lost time in a silly position. I find myself on the outside coming into the penultimate corner here which is going to result in me losing a position to the GTR pushing myself back down to 10th. Fast forwarding slightly here, we're going to rejoin the action coming down the straight out of turn number two on the final lap. I'm running in 10th as we've just seen, I'm running out of time to get back to our goal of 8th place. But keep your eyes up ahead here as the Nissan is going to go for the move up the inside up ahead. The Merc is going to squeeze him too much, pushing him onto the grass and they are both going to go deep there. I just about managed to cut back underneath and despite a small amount of unavoidable contact, we overtake the pair of them and move up to 8th place and the comeback unbelievably is complete. In hindsight I'm so happy I didn't quit, try to get redemption or anything like that. 
I'm trying to set an example on here for everyone. If I rise to it, well, lower myself to it, then I'm just as bad as then. And I can't control what you guys do, but I really would encourage you to try and think about that next time someone wrongs you or does something dirty. Be part of the solution and ambassadors for the game, guys, not part of the problem. And because I didn't react there, I managed to recover and bring home 8th place. It would have been better if I hadn't been rammed, but it wasn't the catastrophe that it could have been. And as our 8th place is confirmed here, amazingly we managed to not only avoid losing points, but we actually gained 400. The next round is Bathurst, somewhere where we have had some success of late, as you would all have seen last week on iRacing. Hopefully... That wasn't all our luck and it hasn't run out, but we'll find that out in the next one guys, which I'll have with you in a few days. But until then guys, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. We also have merch too, so go check out the Teespring store below and go get yourself some of that if you want to support the channel there. But thanks again so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.